Reserve it, Citizen Airman. Hey, good morning and uh, welcome to our Facebook Live event. On behalf of my boss and my wingman, Lieutenant General Richard Scobie, and his wife, Edith, we want to welcome you to his wife, Edith. I'm sorry. His <laughs> wife is Janice. My wife is. <laughs> and this is the thing about Facebook. I can't be able to do it. My lovely wife, Edith, and the boss's <laughs> lovely wife, Miss, Miss Janice, there. <laughs> And uh, hey, welcome to our Facebook Live. Hey, that, uh, hey, this thing is is uh, is live, so we're going to have some of these some of these brothers. Hey, uh, so I can tell you how my uh, my morning went. Uh, of course, we spent all morning just kind of preparing for this <laughs> preparing for this thing. And right before, probably about an hour before I was getting ready to go on, my cat car locked out. So no notes, no anything. So this is going to be raw. A little, and that's all right. And uh, this is, in addition to that, this is going to be a little, uh, a little different than last time. Now, as you can see, I'm not up here uh, by myself. I'm with my lovely wife, Janice. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Edith <laughs> and my daughter, and my daughter Gabby. And uh, and the reason why they're here is because uh, what we do. This is a, this is a family business. This is a family thing. What we do, and and all of us that are in uh, uniform. Hey, we sign up and we say. I do, and we swear to to protect and, and defend this country against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And our families are a lot of, long, of times are along for the ride. They don't sign up for this stuff, but we bring them along. So I have my family along with us, and, and we're actually going to talk about uh, some of the things and challenges that uh, we've been dealing with, and, and I'm sure it's the same for families everywhere. In addition to that, it is the uh, month of the military child, and what a better way to kick this thing off than to have my youngest daughter, Gabby, here to kind of run this show. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to cover down on a couple things, and after I cover down on, on a few things, we're going to open this thing up, and, uh, and we're going to turn it over to Gabby, and, uh, and she's going to run this thing. Similar to last time, we do have some subject matter experts that are online and they're going to answer your questions so we got our team from our medical community our sg fm folks uh the fgc a1 rep so keep all those questions coming again we want to make sure that uh that uh, we answer as many questions as we have for you and we can get that information out to you so if we don't answer them in anything that we don't uh that we don't cover down on today we'll make sure that uh, that we get back to you. You took the time to sit and, and tune in and watch this thing with us. We want to make sure that we take the time to uh, to answer back. A couple of things, and I'll uh, just kind of touch on just a few things from that I wanted to cover before we actually get into this. Some of the efforts, the ongoing efforts, mobilizations. Currently, we have over 300, approximately 316. Reserve citizen airmen that uh, have jumped into this fight. We have them um, boots on ground in, in Epicenter right now in New York City. As a matter of fact, if you saw it, the mayor of New York actually gave a shout out to our reserve citizen airmen, our Air Force members everywhere. They're sitting in this fight and are making a difference. And the boss and I are extremely proud of you for, for what you do. You couldn't you couldn't make us make us more proud. Uh, hey, first line of defense and the majority of people run away from crisis, what do we do? We run towards it and we're right in the middle of this thing. So thank you, you make us all proud. That, uh, one of the questions, we got a lot of questions that came up just about how this is going to impact us with delays and, and possible UTAs and TRICARE, those type of things, insurance, because nobody wants to be uh, left uncovered in a situation like this. And uh, what TRICARE has agreed to do is that uh, for a period of 90 days after this uh, this pandemic is, is declared over, uh, you will still have coverage. Now, the trick of it is within that 90 days that you have to make sure that any of your premiums that weren't paid that are in the rear, they need to be caught up. Now, if you had any type of services that were rendered within that time period, and, uh, and they're going to actually go back and look to recruit that money or, or those services since the last day that you paid a premium. So make sure that, uh, hey, even though this is a, this is a, it's a luxury that's out there, make sure that, uh, that we're being smart about it, right? And we're making the, the right choices. This isn't the time for us to, I know we're cooped up in the house here, not the time for us to uh, uh, 
be ordering an on-demand movie and, and our track here is, is, is uh, in the rears because eventually that bill is going to come due. Same with your SGLI. A lot of questions about, uh, hey, am I going to be covered if we have a UTA and, uh, and uh, we're, we're not paying those premiums? SGI, SGLI, you will still continue to receive coverage, but uh, the minute, uh, the first the time that you're back in status, SGI will look to, to, to recruit those payments. So just be prepared for that because, we, again, we don't want you to be in a, uh, in a bad situation. With the um, face masks, DOD to release some guidance about the wear of face masks on all DOD installations. And basically, if you're on a DOD installation, including Air Force bases, um, uh, make sure that uh, you wear some type of cloth face uh, covering in areas that where you can't maintain at, at least a minimum of six feet of social distancing. Now, what that means, and this is really uh, involves uh, public places. Now you can be in your office with a counterpart or something like that, but if you can't maintain at least six feet of social distancing, make sure that you're wearing a face covering. Now, the reason for the face covering is, is that necessarily won't, won't prevent you from, from contracting this, this uh, virus, but what it will do it, it will help minimize the spread and it will protect those that are around you in the event that uh, you are asymptomatic or you've contracted the virus and you don't you don't know it. And so make sure that you're doing that. And I and I would say that's a probably a good rule of thumb just to carry and to follow, even if you're not on DOD installations. Now, you gotta be smart about this too, right? And kids, hey, I got uh, my two nephews, um, uh, uh, Dean and, and Cameron, hey, they're, they're Spider-Man fanatics. You can get them to wear Spider-Man face masks inside the house 24 hours a day. Now, adults, it's different, right? But this is a matter of life and death. This is not a fashion statement, right? And I, I see the post and I, and I get it. This is a new norm, a new thing for us. Hey, but this is not the time for us to be fashionable. Just make sure that we're maintaining a... Uh, within the guidelines, and because what we don't want to do is, is folks to go out and spend hundreds of dollars on designer face masks, but our premiums <laughs> are, in the, are in the rear. So make sure that, uh, that we're being smart about that. Grooming standards. Also some uh, guidance that came out about relaxed grooming standards, right? We realize that barbershops, beauty salons, some of those things are going to be closed right now, and you don't have access to, to haircuts. But hey, even during the middle of battle, or even on the battlefield, right, we're, we're to maintain a professional image, right? That's what we're called to do. So make sure that, and so that doesn't mean that, yeah, guess what, I'm, I can finally grow that beard that I'm not authorized to wear because I don't have a shaving waiver, those type of things. Just make sure that you're being smart because remember, you represent me, boss, this patch, and this flag. People are looking for us to make sure that we're setting the example. So make sure that, uh, that we're doing that. And hey, I know you guys are going to do the right thing. No need for me to even bring this up. And if we if we need a, a reminder, we got uh, first sergeants and chiefs there to, to kind of help us be accountable. Now, make sure that uh, also that we're keeping up on the, on the latest and greatest information that's out there. COVID nineteen website, the Air Force COVID nineteen website, the AFRC COVID nineteen website. CDC, all those resources to make sure that uh, we're keeping up to date with the latest and, and greatest information. Now, this thing is, uh, within the next couple of weeks, is projected to, I want to say, is to probably hit us the hardest. You know, there's different models that are out there, and certain models project that this next couple of weeks is when we may see, see the hardest, and, uh, and we may be hit the hardest. This is where we need all hands on deck. We need you in the fight. We need you not to not to take our foot off the, the accelerator. We need you to keep it on the accelerator and make sure that we're practicing social distancing, doing all those things until we can get out of this mess. And we need everybody to be with us and we'll come out on the back end. And we're only going to have that if you if you do your part. Hey, so this is uh, the only thing that I wanted to do here. I just kind of wanted to cover down on a couple. A uh, couple of things here. What you really wanted to to to, to talk to and see was was Gabby. So we're going to turn this thing over to her and uh, 
and uh, Gabby with the uh, floor is yours. Honey. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Gabby, and I'm Chief White's daughter. And you know, today I'm just gonna ask my parents some questions about how you know we're adjusting as a family. And but before we get into that, I kind of just want to talk about how I'm doing and a bit of my background. So I'm a freshman this year. It's my first year of high school. So this has taken a big toll on me in my education, I think. And um, I'm kind of like a go, go, go person. I think I get that from my dad. So it's kind of like, you know, I'm always busy. I'm always out of the house. You know, I'm doing sports. Um, so I think now it's different for me to be inside all the time and to just not have the ability to just go out and, you know, do what I need to do. But I am in online schooling, so that's working out. You know, we get our fair share of work. And, you know, just going along with that, we're figuring out what we can do to maintain this, you know, steady rhythm of getting the education that we need so that we don't put a pause on our school year. And um, it's been a little bit hard not seeing my friends, but I hope once everything clears up, we all get to see each other and appreciate, you know, being able to be together like that in person. Um, and I want to ask my mom, actually. Um, mom, how have you been adjusting to the new schedule? What's the most difficult part? Um, I think the most difficult for me is probably seeing your dad every day. <laughs> but I mean, oh, that's jacked up. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's um, probably right. No, 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 no. Um, I think it's just um, being away from family, and of course, um, our older daughter Natalia and our yeah. son Jordan. They're both one is in Colorado, and the other one is in California. So I think that really. Um, it sucks because they're not here with us. And of course you want your family close. And uh, just the whole routine of just, I started to feel normal living out here, you know, for a change. I felt just um, a little, um, I don't know. I think I feel like Gabby started um, playing lacrosse at school. I started volunteering at her school. And I started to meet a lot of her teachers, uh, a lot of the parents there. So I started to feel a, nor a, a normalcy of just going out and being um, around adults. <laughs> so once this happened, it stopped and I'm here in the house. But it's not bad. I love being at home. I'm a homebody. But when somebody is forcing me to stay home, I feel like, wow, it's different. It's just, it's just different. And it's going to be our normal for a while, so we just have to adjust. And I'm okay with it, but it definitely is a challenge. Um, Dad, what would you say is the most difficult part of this new schedule? Yeah, it, uh, it's a it's definitely a, a new norm for me. I think uh, uh, so. This job can be can be a grind. And it's it's constant travel. And at first, you look at it and say, "Hey, I got I got a break." Uh, for travel, luckily, if I'm lucky to spend 10 days at home at month, some, uh, 10 days uh, a month at home was was average that I think that I was spending prior to this this pandemic. But then it, it's so it's been kind of tough because um, this is the time that I think that uh, I mean this job goes by so quick. And this is a time that the boss and I really wanted to get out and, and see Aaron and, and, and how we can make a difference in the units and all the wonderful things that. That, uh, that you do and also how we can help. So in, in certain aspects, it's uh, it's it's kind of like you're 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 watching from afar and, and we're dealing with so much right now and you and there's almost a sense that uh, that you're disconnected from the fight and the fight is still going on and I have to kind of watch uh, you know what the airmen are, are, are doing from afar rather than being out there and being able to to uh, to, to watch them as they as they leave the door and, and jump into the fight. So on a professional level, I think that's what's kind of tough. What's kind of tough, in addition to staying connected and, and working in the virtual atmosphere. On a uh, on a on a personal side, it is uh, it's it's tough, and I can tell you kind of like what uh, what Edith Edith said is that uh, hey, I'm you know I I, I work and, and sometimes we we think that hey man we. We work and, and I would look at Edith and say, man, you, you, you know, you got it good and great. And guess <laughs> what? You get to be home and and and, and um, you, you, you're here and schedule and must be nice. And then you really appreciate how much or how much you take for granted just being socially connected with, 
folks. And I can tell you, it really gave me a greater appreciation for uh, for what she does and and holding down the house. And I see her interacting with Gabby and still keeping this this house running. I know that uh, if uh, if I were to get sick, hey man, this this house is still uh, a move on. But if, if something were to happen to eat it. Uh, hey man, we we'd have some significant challenges in the house. So I know that that I mean, so that piece of it has has really I think opened up my, my eyes. Or in addition to just being at home, and even though I'm here teleworking from home, yeah, I, we're, we're, it, it's some it's some long hours. I think uh, it just mentally it can it can be draining. Uh, so now we're just going to be answering some questions from the from Facebook um, that a few people have asked us, and. I have a question right here. And this is a question from Jamie to me. And the question is asking, do you ever feel overwhelmed at home? If so, what do you do to cope? And I think that I do feel quite overwhelmed a lot of the time because I'm a very forgetful person. And I think having online school is a bit difficult for me because I don't have anybody in person to remind me what assignments I need to turn in or you know what to do or if there's a new assignment assigned. So I think it's kind of tough for me. And then when I forget, I get really down on myself. And I think that I stress over and I'm saying, oh, how am I going to get through this? And I think what gets me through that is music overall. You know, I think music is just one of the things that keeps me going. And it's something that I feel um, can calm you down in a situation where you don't know what to do. And, you know, I actually had um, two concerts I was scheduled to go to. And unfortunately, one of them got postponed and, you know, it's completely understandable because safety is the number one priority, I think, in this time. But um, I'm hoping that I can still go to those concerts and have a good time. Because I'm really looking forward to that. And I actually have another question. <clears throat> um, this one's for my mom from USAF, Know and Grow. What have you been doing at home to relieve stress? Oh, OK. So um, definitely I work out. Every almost every day, I'm going to say I probably take about um, an hour every day to um, just let myself just go get, get in the zone. My husband he uh, bought me the Peloton, Peloton. I'm sorry, um, and I do that for at least an hour almost every day. So that helps. And I have a lot of CDs, um, video online, you know, like just DVDs that I have. I pop those in and I just do like 30 to 45 minutes and it helps. Trust me, just doing that every day, it does release some of the pressure of just being here. Kind of zone out. And um, this is kind of a similar question, but um, the Fourth Air Force Command Chief asked, since you love Next fitness. Question. <laughs> but, <laughs> since you love fitness, what are you doing to keep up with that fitness? So it's oh, OK, sense. yeah. Definitely work out. I um I try not to eat as much carbs, but it's hard because you're at home all day and then you cook for your family and you know they they don't really have to watch what they eat, but I do. So it's hard not to eat like pasta and you know, mashed potatoes and all the good stuff. But I try to at least incorporate some salads in there. So yeah, eating a little I'm not going to say the best right now, but definitely working out and watching what I eat. Uh, we have another question. Um, what have you been doing for family time? So I guess it's just a question for all of us. Oh, OK. Yeah. And this is from Megan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I purchased a bunch of games online. and. Two of the ones that I think we've been like, it's been more popular here is the Jenga and Uno. So we've been playing that. We're trying to get my husband to play, but he's so busy every day. And I know he feels a little like at the end of the day, he just kind of wants to relax, but we'll definitely have him join us, you know, maybe tonight. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, for sure. And one of the things, that's definitely something that I have to, we have to get better at it. and i think what and it's important for us to realize and, I, and I'm, I'm concerned that um, a lot of us we're, we're running this that like it's a it's a it's a 40 yard dash but hey guess what we this is a 400 right and, and even a mile and we need to make sure that uh, that we're staying in this game and make sure that we're taking the time and connect as a family because it can't be all work 
there's 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 some times that uh, and you're right that I'm on a I'm on a I'm on two conference calls at the same time just trying to focus because there's just so much that's going on during the day and you can just be easily exhausted by the end of the day and not put in that that family time so I'm up pretty pretty early which means that I uh, am, am usually putting in about uh, 12 14 hours a day before and then I'm just I'm wore out so I got to make sure that uh, we, we, we create some type of uh, normalcy here in the house or regular battle rhythm so then that makes sure that we can we can uh, mix in that, that family time. Um, and this is another question for all of us. It's, is there anything you will take from this experience that you'll continue when it's over? I guess I'll start. Um, I think for me, it's kind of, you know, setting aside time to do something together. Because, you know, usually I think I go to practice. Normally, I would go to practice every single day and I'd get home at 630. So all I would do is eat, do my homework and then go to sleep. So I think it's good to set aside some time, you know, play a few games sometimes and just to, um, you know, appreciate what you have because, you know, it's something that you really need to go with because I think family is one of the most important things. So I agree. I mean, we take that for granted sometimes. We see each other every day or, you know, we're not um, connected in that way. So we have to take at least 30 minutes maybe 30 minutes to an hour every day to just kind of sit down, talk, ask each other how our day's gone, you know, going or what did we do? What are our highlights of the day? Just things like that. We do take those for granted. So we need to do that more. And I feel like this is brought, I've always been close with Gabby, <laughs> but, um, and I, and honestly, like now that all this is happening, I FaceTime a lot with my older daughter, Natalia. Um, I text, Jordan, you know, he's so busy working and ask, ask them how they're doing. Just those little things we take for granted, you know, so just do that a lot more. Yeah, really, I think really same here. I mean, and, uh, you kind of take for granted just something as simple as being able to go and have dinner or go to a movie, all those things that uh, we can't, we, we can no longer do. You just never know what the new norm is, is, is going to be. So that's been that's been challenging uh, for us. But um, I think that uh, we also have to make sure that we level set, right? Your immediate, your immediate family. So take this opportunity to make sure that that's right. And then because that's the only way that you're going to be able to survive outside the, outside the fence line. So I think that we'll just definitely kind of give us some 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 time to I think to, to reflect and, and reset a couple things and, and um, appreciate some of those things that we that we take granted and give us an opportunity to uh, to appreciate not only our immediate family but also our, our extended family and friends that that we don't get to get to see too much or maybe we had an opportunity to see but we didn't because we think hey we can we can see them uh, see them later and, and and now we're here to where you to where it's, it's, it's uh, even more challenging. Uh, this is another question for me, and it's from the 4th Air Force Command Chief. Mm -hmm. And it's asking, if I remember correctly, you enjoy cooking. Is there any new recipes? Um, I do actually really enjoy cooking. Yes, you cooked yeah. for me last night. I did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I cook as much as I can. You know, I don't match up to my mom in any way, but I think that, you know, I'll, um, I'll saute broccoli, and, you know, I'll make it with um, tricolor pasta. And, you know, I'll try to make that something you know, I, I cook with a lot of vegetables, I think, when I do, because that's something she's taught me. And sometimes, occasionally, I'll make pots de goose for my dad when he asks for them, which is a lot. And um, <laughs> yeah. so that's something I try to do. So I just try to cook as much as I can. So I think it's a big stress reliever and it's something that I really enjoy doing. Um, <clears throat> and this is another question for all of us. Have you guys developed any new habits? And this is from T. Yeah. New habits. Eating what? car. Yeah. <laughs> Eating car. New new habits. Um, I, I think I think for me it, it, it really kind of gives us an opportunity to uh, to strengthen old habits and old good habits. And and that's uh, eating healthy, uh, working out, even though we can't get to the gym or we can't get to some of those things. I mean he had talked about the pellet and bike. Um, running, exercising, those type of things in that uh, that we that we take for granted, and uh, because we always think that hey, guess what? These things are always going to be around. They're always going to be available to us. Yeah. 
and uh, and now when you don't when you don't have them, then you realize that that you that you miss them. And then also, um, I guess one of the new habits is making sure that uh, that we stay connected, family, friends, and extended family. Call those folks that we ordinarily uh, don't get around to because we just think that um, we can we can see them later. So I just think kind of just reinforcing old habits, good habits, and that's more than anything I think that we've been able to do. Uh, just for me, for my habit, I think that, you know, I FaceTime with my sister every single day. So that's one of the things that I, I do all the time. You know, she calls me, we talk about anything and everything, and also I sleep in a lot. So that's one of the things <laughs> that I pick up on. That's been fun. And um, Mom, I'll ask you, what are some resources that family members can look to if they're having a difficult time? Oh, okay, yeah. So we have the Blue Star Families, we have the Military One Source, we have the Key Spouse Group, which I'm a part of, so that's great. Um, and we also have the Airmen and Family Readiness Office. So if you have anything else you want to know about, or if I missed something, you can contact them and they'll give you all the information you need. Um, any last minute words, Dad, before we go? Yeah, hey. Uh... So uh, first, I want to say thank you to uh, to you, honey, and Daddy for being here. And, it, it, and I tell you, I'm I'm not a real uh, huge uh, social media type person, and I I will uh, I'll post stuff. And it's funny because like we'll, we'll go out when we used to go out to dinner. We'll, we'll yeah. go out to dinner, and, uh, and before I can even put my fork in. Wait, wait. And I have to take a picture of the picture food. Of yeah. And to me, oh, it's so pretty. The only person that's <laughs> remotely interested in what we have to eat right now is me, because as soon as we're done, the waiter's going to bring me the bill, right? But you do realize, you do realize yeah. that that's how that's how people connect, and, and people. Now, yeah, and now that's how everybody connects with social media. Yeah, so it's given so it's given us a greater appreciation uh, for it in, in what we all go through, and uh, and I can tell you that's something you know, I've learned. I do want to say uh, be, before we depart here, wanted to uh, give a shout out to uh, to my to uh, my previous boss and wingman, uh, General Ogden. He retired earlier this month, him and Benita, and you probably saw his retirement uh, on online. They did a, a virtual retirement, which is a new norm. The boss and I and Edith we weren't able to get out there yeah. and, um, and see him in, in person. So Godspeed to to you and Miss Danita, sir, and, uh, and and good luck in the next uh, chapter of your life. You are you are an awesome person, and we wish you all the best. We can't really see all the threads there right now because it's kind of frozen, so I'm not sure who all uh, who all chimed in there. But I did see my niece Sequoia. I, I I thought I saw her popped up. I hope that uh, you, Jaden, and Harris are, are doing well. My, uh, my. Speaking of family, my cousin uh, Xavier X Man Fuller just uh, committed to uh, South Dakota State. So, hey, yeah. big ups to you, man, and, oh, and right. you, Kobe right. Owen. You make us all, all proud. And um, and the last thing that, uh, that I want uh, you, you all to remember is to remember patience, right? That's something that, that uh, I think Edith has had to yeah definitely has had to exercise yeah. with, with me because I know I get <laughs> yeah. on her nerves being around here no not all day no. and um, it, with with each other hey with the electronics all those things again five minutes or ten minutes before we're getting ready to to log on I go to press print all the notes and your information that I want to uh, get out to you today and I can't even log on. And so how do, how do I deal with that? Hey, we just we just roll with it. You know, hey, there's bigger fish to fry. And don't let those things kind of kind of stop us from doing uh, what we need to do. Remember kindness. It's free, right? There's not too many things in this in this uh, in this world that are free, but it doesn't cost you anything to be kind to one another. And uh, what you put out in the universe, hey, I'm a big fan. It'll come back to you. Hey, everybody's experience is going to be difficult. Right, and your experience may be different than, than our experience, and um, but that doesn't make what you're going through, what we're going through, what somebody else is going through, any less important to what others are going through. So make sure that, uh, that we practice some understanding and do what you can. Hey, get out, take a walk, 
get away from the TV negativity sometimes just I mean reality but negativity and it can it can kind of weigh on you so just get out do some other things read a book just to kind of make sure that uh, you stand engaged and um, and remember why we're doing this it's uh because we need to flatten this, this curve and make sure that we're practicing all of those uh, measures the guidelines that, that we have in place and because uh, because because we need you we need you in this fight and uh, if you heard the boss talk about it what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take care of Americans. We're going to take care of Americans. We're going to take care of each other. I want to say thank you and to uh, a, a big props to all of our first responders, our medics, public servants. Uh, again, those folks that are, that are uh, keeping our our, uh, our grocery stores filled and, and making deliveries. All those things. Hey, we're all important in this fight, and we need every single one of you. We are proud to. Uh, to be a part of your command team, we are proud to be in, uh, in this United States Air Force and United States Air Force Reserve. We are proud to be your wingman. You make us proud every single day. Keep keep those questions coming, and we'll make sure that uh, that uh, we get back to you. Until then, patches on, fights on. Bye. Thanks for joining us.